Hello and welcome to uh, Model Train Fun. I'm Bo Jensen and uh, today we are going to look at the uh, M84 decoder uh, together with signals. Um, so when would I use the M84 uh, together with signals? Well, um, sometimes you have, um, if you remember the signal series, I talked about the uh, smart signals and the dumb signals. So the smart signals comes with decoders, the dumb signals are basically just uh, signals uh, when they're light in. So you would use the M84 for the dumb signals or in case uh, actually you, you want to save money, then you can actually use the M84 with the dumb signals which would be cheaper than the equivalent amount of uh, smart signals. Finally, it could be that you need some uh, special signals uh, on your layout. So these could be, uh, you know, the uh, Macklin ones are really German signals and they're only a specific type of German signal. So if you need light signals of other uh, kinds from other countries, that could be Danish, it could be Dutch, it could be American, it could be Belgian or English or something like that, right? Then you can also connect them up to the uh, M84. In this video, I'm going to use, uh, in this case, a uh, 411, uh, sorry, a uh, Feastman 4011, uh, which is a home block signal. And then I'm going to use a distant signal from Feastman as well. This one is the uh, 4010, uh, so the Feastman 4010. Uh, and if you look at the signals, in essence, they just come with a bunch of wires. These wires are basically the equivalent of each light in there. So the entire trick is how do we uh, actually uh, connect it to the uh, M84 uh, decoder such that it can control the lights. I'm going to show you how to uh, connect it to the M84 using a separate power supply. So a, a DC power supply. And I'm going to show you how to hook it up to the M84. Uh, using at uh, track power as well. Uh, by the way, if you have uh, AC power supply, do it as I'm doing uh, with the DC power supply. In addition to that, I'm going to show you how to implement a stop track uh, when you're using uh, track power. Oops, let me just pause there because I actually forgot two things. First of all, uh, in this video, I'm only showing you how to connect the signals to the M84. I'm not showing you how to install the M84. So in order to see how to install the M84, go ahead and look at the video installing Macklin uh, 60841, 60842, M84. Uh, that is actually the beginner's episode uh, 8A. I will include a link uh, in the description below. In addition to that, don't forget Whenever you are installing electronics on your layout, always do it with power off, read the manual and read the safety instructions. So enjoy the video. In this video, I'm going to use this uh, Feastman uh, 4011, uh, which is a, a signal, a two-way signal. So basically it's got uh, red and green or uh, proceed and stop or HP0 and HP1. Uh, the reason I'm using this one here is that uh, this actually uh, looks like and fits uh, with the uh, Macklin signals and is a dumb signal. Uh, remember you could use uh, any other signal uh, you like uh, uh, in the same way as here. Um, another reason I'm using this one here is if you look here at the back uh, these signals from uh, Feastman are actually very versatile. So you see I can use 10 to uh, 16 volt AC, I can use uh, 14 to 24 volt DC, or uh, 13 to 24 volt uh, track power. So I basically get uh, all the choices with this one here. So whenever you choose a signal, um, make sure that you get a power supply that matches it. So let's uh, open it. I believe here it says in German, uh, do not uh, uh, open in the other end down here, but there's a sticker. So I'm going to be naughty and open it in the end. They say we should not open it. So let's try and open it and see what we have uh, in the box. So we have the uh, signal here and there should be some wires. Yeah, you see the wires are here. So we got three wires. We got a, a black, 
and a red and a green that we need to connect. Additionally, we got a manual in here and it's in English as well. Oh, that's something here, isn't it? Yeah, we got some uh, stickers as well. We can uh, put on the uh, signal if we like. And what is this? The final thing here. It looks like a safety instruction. So don't forget to read the manual and the uh, safety instructions. Unfortunately, when I was preparing for this video, I forgot to buy the uh, distant signal as well. And I really wanted to include that uh, in the video. Uh, fortunately, in an old drawer, I found uh, one I purchased uh, many years ago. So you can see this is actually the uh, Feastman uh, 4010. Uh, we got it here. And you can see it basically looks like the uh, standard uh, Merklin one with two yellow and two greens. If we look at the wires in the other end, there's an awful lot of wires here, as you can see. So basically there's a wire for each light in the signal plus the return wire. So there's a black wire, two yellow and two green wires. Um, unfortunately, uh, the uh, manual has disappeared over the years. But the good thing is, if we look here at the manual that came along with the uh, 4011, you can see we also have the 4010 uh, uh, here. So basically uh, this uh, manual will work for all the signals in the series. And actually what is important to look for in here is the signal aspect. So we have the signal aspects here. So we got the block signal here that can be, uh, it's actually rather hard to see. It can be uh, stop or red or green and uh, and proceed now we need to make sure that we put the distance signal in in the same way so you can see here when the uh, block signal or home block signal is uh, is stop then the two yellows here needs to be lit um, and when the uh, home block signal is green then it's the two green it's actually hard to see here but that's the way the distance signal work so we just need to make sure everything adds up Let's uh, start by doing a small recap of uh, how to install the uh, M84. Now for the uh, full explanation and the troubleshooting and everything, please go ahead and, and find the video installing uh, Merklin uh, 60841, 60842, so the M84, uh, and that's actually uh, Beginners uh, episode uh, 8A. Um, I will also put a link uh, to this video in the description below. So what's the first thing you need to do? Well, you need to make sure there's no power. So no power to uh, either your Central Station 3, Mobile Station 2, to the track, to the M84, or anything. No power at all. Then you go in and set the address format. Uh, basically on the dip switch, make sure everything is on off. And if it's a Merklin Motorola, uh, so that's the top picture here. Then you would set uh, dip switch 10 to off. Um, so everything is off. If it's a DCC, you would set dip switch uh, 10 to on. Then uh, you need to make sure that your M84 is connected to the power. So you need to connect the red and the brown, either directly to uh, the track or to a bus. Um, if you have the central station 3, and you got the black edition, so that's the MFX enabled, which is the Merklin 60842. Then uh, really what you need to do is, well, just keep the address blank, which we made sure of in the first step, so everything off, uh, potentially with DCC turned on. You can uh, go ahead and power on everything. Then uh, when the central station is ready, make sure it's out of stop mode. You can uh, pull down the green tab on the top, hit edit, discover MFX items, choose the option, get a new address, uh, because then it will make sure that the address doesn't conflict with everything, anything else. And in essence, then your switches or connections uh, on your M84 will uh, appear. Um, if we have the uh, mobile station 2, no matter whether or not it's the black or the white edition, uh, so either the 60841 or the 60842, 
Uh, well, basically, the first thing you need to do is find your manual, figure out what address you want to put it on. In this case here, I have highlighted uh, address 9 to 12, which means that I need to set dip switch 1 and 2. So you need to set that as part of your uh, dip switch. Make sure you still keep the uh, addressing format. So here you see address 9 in Motorola format, where 1 and 2 is on. And, motor and everything else is off, including the last one. If it's address 9 in DCC, 1 and 2 needs to be on, and then number 10 needs to be on, and everything else off. Now you can go ahead and power on everything, and then you can basically go ahead and uh, select uh, accessories, uh, find the correct address in the keyboard, in this case it's 9 and 10, and then you can use the buttons uh, next to the red and green. Um, if you have the Central Station 3 with the white edition of the M84, so the 60841, unfortunately then uh, it's not MFX enabled, so you have to do it manually. So what do you do? Well, you do the same thing as with the mobile station. You find your manual, you figure out what the address is, you set the address on the dip switch, make sure the format is still as you intended to do. Then you turn on uh, the power for your central station tree and the track, take it out of uh, stop mode, and then you manually have to go in and add uh, the accessories uh, four times so you will get the accessory there. Let me first show you how to uh, connect the uh, signal to the M84 using an alternative power supply. So in this case, I got my uh, DC uh, power supply down here, and I want to use that with my signal. Um, so, and if you remember from the uh, installing the M84, it, in reality, it doesn't matter if you have a light, if it's the, uh, in this case, it's DC, if it's the uh, red or the black that goes to the center, we just need to be consistent, right? So uh, let's uh, look at the manual. In this case, I'm using the uh, Feastman uh, 4011 uh, signal. So if we look here at the diagrams, there's a diagram here, uh, but that's, uh, power supply that's there is the 5200 that's actually an AC power supply it's the same one used here so in in all the drawings actually here in the manual uh, it's uh, it's the AC but we wanted to use it for DC now remember why was it we uh, wanted to use DC because DC will not cause flickering on video as uh, would the AC okay so no help in the manual so but we got these three uh, red and green, I suppose, are going to the red and the green light, and black is the return. So why don't we just try and connect it? So how about I just connect the black to the black here, and then let me just connect the red, and I'll connect the red here to the red, and we see what happens. If we notice, nothing happened here at the uh, signal, okay? Maybe it's the wrong way around, so... Let's uh, unclip these again, and let's try and do it the other way around. So I'm gonna put the black here in the red, like this, and I'm gonna put the red in the black. Let's see if we have any success now. Now we can see there's actually a light in the signal. Excellent. Um, so what did we learn from that? Well, this Feastman signal, uh, uh, when you put it in DC power, you actually have to swap the cables here. Now, uh, the next thing, uh, so now we figured out how to, uh, how to uh, light the signal with the power supply. The next thing we want to look at is uh, the M84. Remember, the M84, we want one common that goes to the two sides. Uh, since I got a red and a green, I want to put the red on the red dot and the green on the green dot here. So I will start by doing that. So here I got the red. Oh, I am missing a screwdriver, one second. So uh, I got a screwdriver now. So uh, we wanna put the red on the uh, red. So I'm gonna put that in here. All right, and then I'm just gonna tighten the screw. 
Okay, like this. I'm gonna, gonna put the green in the other one. So we have the green here. I put the green where the green dot is. All right. Here we have it. Now uh, we just figured out that uh, the red here needs to go into uh, the black. So I need a wire to go into the black. I don't have a black wire, but I have a yellow wire. So I'll put the yellow here in the uh, center. Like this. So we got red to the red dot green to the green dot and then we got a return to the power supply in this case it goes to uh, ground or the black on the dc power supply we put that in target yes it's in there and then we have the red oh sorry the black wire and we just learned before the black needed to go into the red of the power supply so we uh, Put that in here all right and now we can uh, try out uh, the uh, m84 and see uh, what it does we uh, take it out of stop mode and we can see here it's green if we look here at the m84 you can also see the there's a green light down there we change it to red yes and it works so now it works and do remember on the uh, Mobile Station 2, you change it by clicking on the keyboard, in this case address 9. On the Central Station 3, you just click the icon. Now, um, it is a little odd that this one is the opposite way around. I would say, in general, just try it out uh, with your signal, because it really depends on... So this is an LED um, that's in the signal, so it can only take power one way. Furthermore, you can see it's actually protected by another diode here. So it's just a question of finding the right way around. And we did that in this case. Let's look at the, how to uh, connect the distance signal. So we uh, got the uh, distance signal here. Um, remember that the distance signal basically reflect the same uh, uh, main signal. And here we got the home block signal that we uh, connected before. So in essence, we just want this distance signal to show uh, prepare to stop if the uh, home block signal is red and we want it to show uh, prepare uh, to proceed in case the uh, home uh, block signal shows green. Um, the wires we have here, you see we got uh, a total of five wires. We got one black, two yellow, and two green. So I'm just going to assume that this connects exactly in the same way as the other one. Uh, they are both from Feastman, so uh, why not? So uh, remember we discovered we had to put the blue in the red or the black in the red here, so uh, why don't we uh, start with that? We uh, basically just plug that in. All right, so now we got that one connected. And now we basically just need... Um, Remember the way it worked, we looked in the manual uh, briefly before, is that the uh, distance signal prepared to stop is the two yellows. So I will take the two yellows here. Well, let me just separate the yellows and the greens. So I'll take the two yellows, and then I basically just want to connect those to the red. So let's see if we can make it all fit in here. So we take our... M88 or M84, sorry. And we see if we can make room for it all within the same connector. So now we have the red of the home block signal and we are going to add the yellows of the distance signal. All right. And then the same thing for the greens. So we have here the oh, we have here the greens for the distance signal, and I basically want that to show green whenever the uh, 
home block signal is green. So we just add that as well. Unscrew. Make sure it can all fit in there. So we add that to the green dot. All right. We tighten the screw again. All right. And now we have uh, connected the uh, distant signal as well. So we take our two signals, we have them here, and then we try it out. We go out of stop mode. We see now uh, that the uh, home block signal is green and we got the distance signal showing green as well. So that's exactly what we wanted. We turn it over to red. We see that the home uh, block signal shows red and the distance signal shows the two yellow. Uh, so the um, prepare to start. So in essence, uh, we just need to remember to connect the uh, distance signal in exactly the same way as the home block signal. Now let's uh, connect the uh, signal to an AC power supply. And in this case, I'm actually going to use the track power. Um, don't forget to make sure that your signal actually uh, support the power. And in this case, if you actually are going to connect it to track power as I am, make sure that it actually connects the uh, Macklin uh, Digital Systems track power. Now, when it's um, DC, you saw before, I had to be uh, sure that I plug it correctly in the power supply, otherwise the LEDs will not uh, light. When it's AC, it honestly doesn't really matter which way around you uh, connect it, it will always allow it. And that's due to the nature of the AC. Um, however, we still got our three uh, uh, connectors here, so red, green and black. Um, and I definitely want to be able to connect the uh, red and green here into the uh, uh, M84, just as we did before, because that's the way I can shift between the two signals, right? So um, it's uh, AC, but I'm still going to connect them the same way to my M84. So I got my M84 here. I'm going to connect the red, which you can see I got the red. Oh, oops, I got everything stuck here. I got the red here. I'm going to connect it where there's a red dot. I'm going to plug it in and I'm going to going to tighten the screw here. All right. Give it a little tug. Yes. I have the green. It goes with the green dot. All right. Like this. And again, we tighten the screw. Now, uh, since it is track power, I want to have the center going to red and this and why do I want this in truth it doesn't matter however when we're going to make the stop track it makes it a lot easier so I take the red here so you can see the red here and I'm going to connect the red wire to the center of my connector all right um, in the other end of the red wire, I got a spade connector. So maybe I should just say what I actually do have here is, uh, let me just show you. I have a red wire here that is twisted in one end and has a spade connector in another end. The cables I use are the one standard from Macklin. So the brown 7102 or the red 7105. There's other colors as well. And then I use the uh, spade connector 74995, which you can see here. I take it and I actually solder it uh, to, the, uh, to the wire, as you can see here, squeeze it around and solder it. If you are doing a permanent layout, consider just soldering this wire directly to the track. All right, so we have those two there. Now I have my red here. I wanna put that on the track. The way I do that is I look at my track. My track has, you can see it here, there's a B here and a zero here. The B is red and the zero is brown. You can also see B is the one closest to the edge. That's where the red goes. So I put the red on and you just 
gently slide it on like this, uh, which also means we would like a brown because I need to complete the circuit, right? So here I got the brown, same thing. Do notice there's a flat side and a side, non-flat side. The flat side is actually the one that goes uh, down towards the track. So we're going to slide it on and you see the flat side down. So now we have almost everything connected, right? We got um, red and green from the signal, red back to the track. And now I got a brown here that I need to connect somewhere from the track. Well, what I really need to do is to connect it together with the, uh, the brown we have here. Um, you could solder these together or you could have soldered it directly to the track. However, I don't have that. So what I'll do is I will use a test wire. So I got a black wire here that I can basically quickly snap on one end here to the, uh, to the black coming from the signal. And then I snap my black to the brown, the other end of my black to the brown here. Remember, I could just have soldered all of this. This is just to show how it is. Now I got my track here where I connected my red and black to. Um, so you see here is my red and black. It goes over here. We see red goes into the center. I got red and green from the signal, which we got here. Whoops, I got it entangled in wires. So here we got the signal. I got the black coming out of the signal, going to the brown wire, which goes back to the track. Now let's try it out and see if it works. So I'm going out of stop mode now. And you can see it actually goes on green. And now I can turn it to red and green and red. And yes, it works. So you can see it's just as easy to do with AC or track power as it is with the DC. So how do we now uh, connect the uh, distance signal here when we got everything uh, connected to track power? Remember, we want the distance signal basically to um, show uh, what the uh, home block signal is showing. So whenever the home block is showing red, then you want the distance signal here to show uh, prepare for stop. When the home block is showing uh, green, you want the uh, distance signal to show prepare to proceed. So basically, if we look at it, it has uh, eight wires. Uh, you can see here, you can see uh, one black, uh, two yellow and two green, uh, ones for each LED. So we basically, whenever the home block shows uh, red, we want the two yellow to be on. And when the home block shows green, we want the two green uh, to be on. So basically, we just connect it uh, into the circuits as we already have. Let's start by the black one here. So we have the black one, which is the return. Remember, I had that one connected up to a special wire here uh, that extends the black. And that means basically the uh, black goes back to the uh, to the brown wire. So we have here that the other end of the black extender goes into the brown to the track. And now we basically just need to uh, connect up the uh, two yellows and the two greens. So I'm going to start with the two yellows here. Where do I want the two yellows? Well, let me just pull everything closer. I got here the uh, red and I already got the uh, home block connected there to the red. So I basically just want the uh, red uh, also to be connected to the distance signal. So we connect, we unscrew the red again. And let's see if there's room to connect the two yellows as well. It looks like it. So we got that one in here. All right. And then we basically just tighten the screw again. Okay, so now we got the red to the to the uh, home block and the two yellows to the uh, distance signal. Now we just need to find the two greens. So we got the two greens here and we want to connect that to the green with the uh, home block signal again. Loosen the screw. All right. And then we need to make sure that the 
greens also for the distance signal fits in here all right and you see we got all the greens we tighten the screw all right and um, of course now it looks a little like a, a wire mess uh, because i'm just having a test set up oh and um, when you're doing the uh, setup so now you can better see it we got the red the two yellow for the distance signal the green for the home block and then the two green here when you are connecting it up make sure that you see there's some wire sticking out that you insulate appropriately and connect everything appropriately so now we can try it out and we got them here and we go out of stop mode here and we see they're both green so the home block signal is green and the distance signal show uh, prepare to proceed in the same way we can uh, change it to red we see the home block turns to red and the uh, distance signal turns to prepare to start so everything is easy we basically just had to uh, connect the um, uh, distance signal to the same connector as the home block and make sure that the lights uh, show the appropriate let's look at uh, how we can make a stop track as well uh, so the way i'm going to show you now only works with signals that can actually be track powered so what i'm going to do now is i'm going to power the signal from the track and i'm going to make a stop track so again i have my uh, feastman signal uh, from before um, and then i got a track down here uh, if you notice, maybe it's hard to see in the video, the track actually divides here. So I'm going to imagine that the uh, train comes over here from the left or from the right and then continues uh, to the left. And here where the track divides, if it's green, it can continue. If it's red, it will stop. Uh, how do we do that? Well, the way uh, um, stop tracks work in the Macklin world is that you basically um, so here you see uh, the the track is divided here you make sure that the center rail here is not powered on the on the stop track side so here's the stop track so we want the center rail over on this side to be powered when it's green and we want it to uh, be not powered when it's uh, when it's red how do we do that well first we need to uh, insulate the tracks how do we do that we uh, have these uh, 74030 uh, which are insulators you can see they're in here I got some here um, so there's only uh, three insulators here they come uh, normally four so you can see one is already taken off what you do is you twist it off so you got it like this you twist another one off because we need two all right and then you have a uh, these little thingies here and that's actually the insulator you can see there's a little tap down and there's a pointy end over here if we um, disconnect our track so here we got our track uh, the way it is is uh, you see there's uh, two uh, uh, connections here on the track the upper connection that's directly under the rail that's uh, the brown the one that's closest to the center so down here that is the uh, red and the center so that's the one we want to insulate so we uh, basically just take uh, the little thing here you can see there's a hole and you basically just gently squeeze it on i usually see do it a little crooked and then press it in you may have to try it out a couple of times you see this one i already bent it that's not good we need to make sure that this one is straight so you see now it's straight because then it will fit on the other side i do the uh, same thing with the other track here and again here you see there's one directly under the rail that's the brown and the one here that's closest to the center is the center and the uh, red so we do the same thing here i'm going to basically you just hold it a little you see i hold it a little crooked and then i basically just put it in so the center rail has two connections okay now you have it like this 
And now we can gently push these together like this. And if I didn't, well, this one is a little crooked, I see. Okay, so like this, and you see they snuck nicely together. And then they click together. We have the seam here, right? And if you turn it around, you can see they're insulated. And it's actually, if you see over here, it's the, the thing that goes to the red track here. Okay, now what's the other thing we wanna do? Well, we wanna make sure to take power from here and be able to give it into here. So how do we do that? Well, we take the track before the insulation. So this is the track before the signal here. I'm going to uh, grab some red from this one here. And you can see there's a B in the other end here. So I'm just going to connect my red to the B, which is the center. All right. Oh, oops. Um, so actually to this rail here now, you see I got red and brown that goes down to my M84. And then to the other end, I've connected a red, which is also a center. So this one I can use to uh, both power my signal and to power the, uh, to power the uh, stop track. So what I do with this one is I put this one in the center. So this is the red from uh, before the uh, where we have the signal or the divider so we put that in we want to add our signal again so we have our signal here we got the two wires here red and green we connect them as before so here oh let me first take this one so here we have the green we put that in the green side of the connector under the green dot, so to the right. Okay, we tighten the screw. All right, so we got it here. And then we need the red to the other side. Okay, so here we got the red. We can put that in as well. Yes. Okay. Oh, I see I did that wrong. So one thing you have to remember before uh, putting anything in the connector, unscrew it entirely and then you can, uh, you can put it in and then you can tighten the screw. So I hadn't done that here. All right. Now, uh, then we have a, uh, Remember the black here from the signal. I basically extended it with a wire here so I can attach it to something. So my black end, what do I do with that one? Well, I'm going to uh, connect it to my track. So here I have my track. I have uh, the divider here. I just need to uh, connect my uh, brown to uh, a, uh, any of the rails. It can be any of the track, both the one before or after the divider. I'm going to uh, connect it uh, after the divider because remember it was only the center rail I insulated. So I now have the red here and, sorry, the brown here. And now I can connect the black from the signal to that, okay? Now I'm just missing uh, one thing. So um, we got, if we look at it here, over from the, uh, track over here I have red and brown here from the track before the divider red and brown that goes in and powers the M84 over here I got the red that goes over here goes to the center of the connector and powers the green and the red to the signal and from the signal I go back through the black and I go into the brown back to the track here now I just need to make sure that the track here after the, uh, the, um, the, the, the divider or insulation, which is here, it will actually get power when it's green. Well, how do I do that? Well, I basically just take myself another wire that I can connect. And um, what do I wanna do with that? Well, I take the track after the insulation and here I connect it into, let me see if I can. 
So here's the B. So here I want the red because I want to be able to power red after the insulation. We have the insulation here, so it's the track after. I connected the red here. And what is it I want to do with this one? Well, pretty simple. I basically just want to connect it here to the green because remember my signal is powered by track power. So whenever the green turns on, it will come power or red power out of that, which is also exactly what I want for my center connector. All right, so we make sure to twist it. Unfortunately, now I have to put in two wires here. So I unhook my green again, completely unscrew it. So it's out now. Then I put in the red to the track after the insulator. I put that in there into the green. Whoops. Yeah, I don't have enough fingers for this. Let's see if I can do it like this. But I also want my green in here. Okay. We tighten the screw. So what do I have now? I have red power coming in. Red power can be used for the red light in the red signal, but it can also be used for the green light in the green signal and to power the insulated track afterwards. And now we try it out. So I put it here. All right, let's see if we can make everything fit. I got my sick. Uh, I got my signal here. I got my M84 over here. Uh, remember, the way the signal really is positioned now is this way because the locomotive is going to come from uh, right to left. Okay. I'm going to uh, mount my locomotive. So I got myself a locomotive here. Let me see if I can get it on the track. All right. So it's on the track now. Now let's take it out of stop mode and see what happens. Immediately we can, when we go out of stop mode, uh, it turns to green. And that's actually because that's the uh, setting on the M84 right now. And we can uh, check. Yes, I can still change between red and green. Uh, we try and have it on green. And now we try and uh, drive our little locomotive. So remember here is the uh, insulation. So, um, we drive past the insulation, which is there, and you see it made it all the way across. So it's basically here the, we have insulated. Okay, let's go back. All right, and then we uh, change it uh, to red. So I'm changing the signal now to red, and you see now the signal turned red. Um, so here is the insulation, and we can see our signal is red and now we try and uh, drive it uh, again and we can see here when it comes into the uh, insulated section you see it made it a little in but that's it now it cannot drive anymore because it's actually uh, there's no power on the stop section so what was the trick we actually did here? Well, I'm using a signal that actually uh, does track power. And then the only thing I really do is I make sure that uh, here on the same connector where we have the signal. So this is uh, connector one right now. I connect the red light uh, to uh, the red side or the red dot. I connect the uh, green side uh, over here to the green light and the stop track. And then the center, I basically power with the red. So that's the entire trick here. All right, that was uh, how to uh, connect the home block and distance signals uh, to the uh, M84, which really wasn't that difficult. Um, if we have the uh, home block signal, uh, the only thing we really need to make sure of is that the red light and the green light of the home block uh, goes uh, to the red and the green uh, dot on the decoder. Uh, the uh, uh, distance signal was a little more interesting because it comes with a lot of wires. Now that's uh, true here for this particular distance signal, which is the Feastman uh, 4010. Uh, however, others uh, may look different. But what is important is to figure out 
how to connect it to the red and green. And you connect it to the same connector because you basically want the distance signal to show uh, what is the uh, next home block signal showing, right? So they are basically uh, connected uh, to the uh, same connector. Um, as uh, you saw in the video, what I did was uh, before I took the home block, uh, home block signal and connected to the uh, to the uh, M84. I tried to connect it up to a power supply without the M84, just to make sure that I understand how uh, the uh, signal is lit. Uh, in this case, it was a Feastman, but you can do this, of course, with uh, any home block signal you have that can show uh, uh, red and green. Um, the benefit uh, from testing it first is that you know how it works. But as a general rule of thumb, there should be one return wire and then there should be a wire for the red and the green uh, lights in the uh, home block signal. Now, if you uh, have LEDs in your, uh, in your signals, uh, like uh, these Feastman here, then it really uh, does matter how you connect it up, especially for DC power. If it's AC power, it doesn't matter too much. If it's light bulbs, it doesn't matter too much. Uh, we also showed how you can take um, the uh, signal and uh, connect to both DC power, so an alternative power supply, and actually also to the track power. When we use the track power, we could also connect the track power to the uh, connector here, such that the track power would actually uh, come in in the center as red for the center rail and will come into the center connector here and then I would connect the uh, center um, connector uh, or the green uh, of the connector to the center rail of the stop track, right? In the video I only showed that you insulate before the signal so if I have the signal here, you come here you want to insulate at the signal so from the track comes before and then you have the stop track after. However, don't forget to also insulate after because you only want the stop track to be a certain distance. You don't want to insulate the entire layout behind this. So you need to think about that. In a future video, I will uh, go beyond the uh, normal home block signal. Uh, so the home block signal was easy because there's a red and a green, you just connect it to a red and green. If you have a three-way signal or a four-way signal, so one that would show a stop, red stop, a green proceed, and a yellow proceed slowly, so a three-way, how do you connect it up? Well, you do it to two connectors, but there's a little trick and I'll show you what it is. Um, so um, the other thing I've been considering is, is the M84 really a good one for the, uh, for the signals? To me, it has the benefit that you can have a separate power supply. You could also add DC power to it, so you don't have the flickering of the AC power. However, what I couldn't really make the uh, M84 do is do the blinking and doing the fading. So maybe you want it to fade when it's changing between red and green, so it fades out and fades in. Or maybe uh, for some countries, uh, the red is actually blinking. I know it is for, for some countries, or the yellow is blinking or something like that. So you can make the M84 blink, but then it has the annoying click, 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 clickety click sound. Um, so another thing I'm, uh, considering is in a future video to show how to use the uh, M83 uh, for signals instead. So the benefit of the M84 is you can have a uh, separate power supply. The disadvantage is uh, you cannot really do the fading and the blinking. However, with the M83, you could do the fading and the blinking, but you cannot have a separate uh, power supply. It would basically be the power from uh, the track, right? Um, so I'm considering doing that with the uh, M83 as well. So then we basically have all the possibilities and you can choose what would fit best with your layout. So uh, if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up, hit the uh, like button and please do consider subscribing to the channel. Hit the little notification bell such that you'll be notified about upcoming videos. And then I hope I see you on the uh, next uh, video as well. Enjoy!